How'd you guys do with this mixer brush thing? It was a lot harder than I thought, but it was. You cut out. It, like, it, it, it takes some time to get, getting used to. What you got to remember, takes yeah. It time to get uh, getting used to, but it was fun. Uh, it does take a little bit of time to get used to. The, uh, however you want to assign the controls on it, because we're going to talk about it a little more in a different way today. And we're going to talk about it in a little bit different way on Wednesday, okay? Because I think it's an important tool. But um, And I do, and I think it's, I mean, when I first used it, it made no sense to me, okay? So that's why I'm spending some time on it. Um, and, and however you think about the controls, like the wet control that makes sense it's how much moisture is on your brush just like a real brush um the load is how much paints on your brush uh and then the flow is kind of how how it's flowing off the brush and i just look at that as like how much of the the tool is activated sort of like the other tools where, like where you pressure. have yeah sort of it's to me it's just it's sort of like if you look at other tools in Photoshop, there's some other ones that are called flow or whatever. And really what they're doing is adjusting how much strength that particular tool has. Does that make sense? Yeah. And sometimes it'll it'll put a different word on it. Sometimes it's flow. Sometimes there's another one too, and I can't think of it. Um, it's like opacity. Well, uh, like strength. Um, flow. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, and then there's one other one I can't think of off the top of my head. I think in um, with the burn dodge and burn tool, it has a different term, but they're all kind of the same thing. It's like, how much of this are you getting? Okay. Now, the other thing, hang on. Uh, I had a couple of questions. Like when it came to trying to paint uh, on top of a layer, yeah. it would usually just go straight to smearing. Yeah. Okay. That you got to adjust. Let's look at this. <laughs> there's a couple things here so let's look i'm going to go on the layer above it and i'm going to go sample all layers and right now i've got zero on this all right there it goes okay i don't like this brush so i'm going to switch brushes let's try no i don't want that one either let's discard this Okay, so you've got to look at things like, here's the mix. That's going to be a big one. And I need more probably. That's weird. The flow's at 100%. I think it just might be the size, maybe. Might be. Hang on. I'm trying to get it less. There it goes. Yep, you're right. Okay, so <clears throat> the mix now is at 75. So that's literally how much it's going to mix with the paint. So if you back that off, it shouldn't be as smeary. Does that make sense? Where'd you go? Uh, can you still hear me? Yeah. Does yeah, that, that make sense? sense? Okay. And the other thing is they all relate to each other. So sometimes you go, well, I up the mix and it's not mixing. You might look at the flow and the flow is like all the way at 1%. Okay, so everything sort of um, affects each other. Does that make sense? Lost you again. Uh, my mic is acting up. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. So the trick with this thing really is you've really got to figure, you've got to make sure that you understand that these things interrelate to each other. I'm going to put a Let's put less flow on here and see what happens. Now it's just got less pain in it, but it's it's still smearing. See that? Mm -hmm. Got very little pain in it. Now, <clears throat> when we talk about this on Thursday or uh, Wednesday, what we're going to do on Wednesday, um, this idea of of not mixing in too much, it's really nice for what we'll do because then you can get nice little like really subtle reflected light and things like that. Okay. Okay. Because like when you use a smudge brush, the smudge brush pretty much is what it is. 
And here, if I go with a clean brush and I use it sort of as a smudge, it's um, I can really control it, you know, and I can kind of dial it in and get it, you know, and then I could save, like if I create a mixed, uh, a, um, a mixer brush I really like, I can save it just like we've saved other brushes out of the brush uh, setting panel, you know, mm -hmm. and then I can save it, name it, and then I can put it in, you know, to say all my custom mixing brushes that I like, because if you create a mix, what you'll find out, uh, let's say you're, you're doing a lot of like I do um, digital stuff and there's uh, I do a lot of uh, character people, a lot of environments and stuff. I have specific brushes where I'll go. This is a, my, uh, this is my brush that I like to use for ground stuff. This is my brush. I like to use a little bit for like foliage. And I just kind of know that they work well with those kind of ideas, or maybe it's a portrait thing. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And then I could save them, but you know, the mix and the flow and even the, and the load, all of it, um, all interrelate. So if something's like, if you make a brush and it's not doing anything, check those, those things. Okay. Because okay. if you, don't, you know, if, if one of them's like all the way at zero, it might make it do nothing. And, and it becomes intuitive after a while. That's why I'm spending time on this. Cause I wanted to get a little bit intuitive. Cause when I first learned this, man, I was like, I, I gave up on it. I was like, I don't get this at all. Mm -hmm. Cause I didn't yeah. have anybody to show it to me. And I'm just like, this sucks, man. Like what, what's the point of this? But it's actually a really powerful tool. Thank you. Okay, who else? Anybody? Why am I not getting anybody's name on here? Hello. That's good. Does this all make sense? Yeah, yeah, it's fun. Um, I had a question though, because I noticed that when I was trying to put down more colors, um, I felt like, I know I shouldn't do this, but I was pressing really hard on my pen. And um, I think I was getting frustrated because I felt like the colors weren't showing up. Okay, that might've been a flow thing. Okay. It also might've been a load thing. You might you might've had a, like the, your load of paint. Cause you know, if you got oil paint, you painted in oil, right? No, I haven't. Okay, well, let's say gouache. Have you ever painted gouache? Yeah. Okay. So this wet mix up here is, is literally like if I take gouache and I don't put hardly any paint or any uh, water on my brush and I pick up that paint, it's going to be real thick, right? Right. If I add water to it, it's going to get lighter in value, correct? Yeah. That's what wet does, okay? Okay. Then load is how much paint I have loaded on the brush, right? So if I, I got a lot mm -hmm. of paint on there. And it also is what sort of controls that where it drags off, how fast it drags off because that's based yeah. on how much paint I have loaded on the brush, right? Mm -hmm. And then flow is gonna regulate how much of that paint flows off the brush, right? Yeah. So like if you had, you might've had wet at nothing or something like that. Um, now, if you go up too much with wet, it's not gonna throw, like you might've had the wet mix up pretty high and then it's got a lot of water in it and it doesn't, it's not gonna have that much coverage. And then sometimes also, the flow does this. Like you can keep going back over it a little bit, just like real paint, and it builds up that section a little bit. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. That's what flow will do, okay? Now, I like to set the flow where it doesn't necessarily lay down a big fat brush of paint. I might want to go back over it a couple of times. That way I'm controlling it. Does that make I sense? see. Just mm -hmm. like I would with real paint. So I'm always trying to emulate, or I'm not even trying to emulate. It's just the way I paint because that's the way I learned to paint was traditionally, okay? Um, right. So then these tools, I like to dial them in so they just feel natural to me. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Um, so that little landscape came up pretty good, yeah? Yeah, thank you. Um, so just what you need to do is, exactly. by the way, this little swatch thing is a really great idea. Go and do that again. And now when it's doing that, look at all, look at your main three, I think it's three. It's one, two, three, it's four actually. Your four main um, uh, controls, okay? Again, yeah. what you really need to understand here is how they relate to each other and how one can be off and it'll throw everything off. Does that make yeah. sense? Because uh -huh. again, it's just like a brush. If I've got a lot of water on a brush, the mix, and I grab hardly any paint, um, the load, it's going to, it's not going to do anything, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing here. 
So just, I would just do those little swatches like you did right there and just dial that in a little bit. I, I think it, it won't take you more than about 15 minutes probably to go, oh, okay, I get it. This, this was down and that was up and you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Okay, it's, a little, I'll try it out. <clears throat> it's a little different than other tools in Photoshop in that the way they really, really relate to each other. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The other one's sort of straightforward. It's like, oh, this is an overlay and this is less opaque. You know, it's opacity or whatever. And it's like, boom, there it is. But these all interlock. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to show you another little thing with it today. That's, um, there was another rub into it. Okay. And then I'm going to show you something on Wednesday. That's sort of a little combination of, of this and a little bit of what we're going to talk about today. Okay, cool. Thank you. Um, but you can see how that can be. And by the way, have you taken digital painting yet? I have. Yeah, I have Bernard's um, uh, paintbrushes. Whatever those are. But um, at, did he talk about the mixer brush? Yeah, he uses it a lot. Okay, good. So you, you're somewhat familiar with it from that, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So you should have you should know it backwards and forwards. Yeah. I don't know why it just wasn't coming up. I have a problem with mixer brushes. I just need to practice more with it. Yeah, um, it's a tricky tool, okay? Yeah. And I hear that from everybody, you know what I mean? Everybody's like, at first, it's just like, what in the hell is this? <laughs> it is, it's frustrating. It was frustrating to me, man. Okay, so most of these, some of them have harder edges. So I want you to play around with those soft edges or a lot of them, not all of them. Oh, that's cool. Who's this? Where's Jen? Hi. Yeah, I am. So are these right here sort of a wet mix that you dragged? So honestly, I used a bunch of different brushes. That was like the final like stroke. And it, I maybe used just one brush, but I used a million. But did but, it feel right to you? Did you get it? I mean, it took some time, but mm -hmm. I guess for the most part, I get it. I want you guys to keep going with this. It's an important tool, especially if you're going to go in digital painting. And then there's other things that people do with photo correction and things like that. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's important that you just learn it. Okay. It, sure. After a while, after a while, it's like anything else, it becomes second nature and it's intuitive. But again, I know I'm going to harp on this over and over again. Those four main controls relate to each other. So if you're having a problem with something, you need to look at all four of them together. Right. Yeah. I like Irene um like I just kept clicking down harder on the mouse because it would it wouldn't like paint so I kept tweaking with like the load and all that stuff I think it really depends on the brush too uh the brush has well if you notice the one I just pulled up that was I don't know what that brush was it didn't really lay that much paint down right but I think that brush just doesn't lay that much paint down now I could probably build it up I could probably push the the load of paint on it um pull the mix down because here's yeah. what you think, or here's what my brain does. My brain goes, mix, oh, I want more, right? Because you go, oh, yeah. that's going to make more. Actually, when you up the mix, it makes less because you're adding water. So now it becomes less, right? Open, right? Which to my brain, even though if, if I think about it that way, it makes sense. But when I'm doing it, I'm going, this doesn't make any sense. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or now I don't, but at the time I did. So it, that one to me even though it's totally right the way they did it, it, it reads from a digital perspective, it, it reads almost backwards to me anyway, right? Yeah. But I'm also kind of dyslexic, so I might have to do it. <laughs> okay, does anybody have any questions on this? I wanna make sure that everybody's understanding this. Ooh, that one's good. Where's Jessica? Hello. Oh, now your name pops up. That looks pretty. Oh, was it not before? No, nobody's name is up. The only ones that are up is when it just is displaying their name because their camera's off. But if they're on right now, I, I don't have any names. Oh, okay. Which is kind of annoying. Um, okay, so it didn't look like you had any problems with it, yeah? <laughs> um, I think I, I just managed to work with it. I don't know. I don't know why I was like, I should do a landscape because I've never done a landscape before. Um, but it felt like probably the most appropriate for this oh, assignment. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> I was pretty lost most of it though, but I, I was satisfied by the end. <laughs> okay, but do you understand it now? That's my main goal. Yeah, I think so. I think uh 
for me, I felt like the biggest uh, effect, I kind of, for the most part, left the wet and the uh, mix pretty low for a lot of it, unless I really okay. needed something to mix. Um, but yeah, I'm sure a lot of fine tuning would be needed. <laughs> Was this a custom um, leaf brush or is that just a, like a nice, brush? oh, I see, okay. Like one thing, let me see if we can do this. I wanna come in and just see if, I'm gonna go up. Now, you got all these layers, right? That's good. Yeah. I'm gonna go up here and if I go and I have sample of layers on, it's gonna do exactly that. It's gonna sample all the layers below it, right? Yeah, and when I would turn that off, it felt almost too harsh. And then I was kind of going back and forth between like, oh no, like let's just try and wing this, I guess. There it goes. So I might come in here, because what I want to do when I get this kind of uniformity in here, mm -hmm. I'm probably going to want to go, I'm going to try and get a, let's get a clean brush. Also, I don't know if this is for everyone, but um, I think it was a load. If you have it down at all for me, it would just like automatically wipe the color for some reason. Or maybe that was early on though. So maybe it was another setting that I was screwing up. I'm not sure. Let me push this up. There we go. Okay, so now I got this like nice kind of oily brush and I'm gonna come in here and do a little bit of, and this is just on a layer I've got an empty brush. I'm really just using it as a, a smudge brush. Yeah. Yeah. So what I like to do is come in here and bust up the uniformity. If I use a, you know, and I can get like, I can drag these out a little bit and start to get that weedy kind of grassy feel. Right. Yeah. And I can break up these edges, break this up here. I'm not going to do it everywhere, but what that's going to do is make sure that everything hasn't got like a uniform because one thing, and by the way, you can do this digitally or um, traditionally, but mostly I see it digitally. If people create a brush, like let's say a leaf brush, and they go, oh, cool, and they spatter it all over the place, then you go, all right, but all your leaves look the same. It's clear you're using a, I want to break it up. So sometimes I'll come in and I'll erase some out, I'll smudge a few, I'll add some by hand, and I just break it up. Does that make sense? Yeah. I think, I think it's also because like a, it's just like learning the tools because I felt like every time I would try and do that, I would just get like a patch of mud and then I was like, oh, like. <laughs> no, this, this, this is it. a great, I mean, this is a great, uh, you did a great job on it. All I'm doing is I'm always going to look at everything and kind of go, okay, what can we, so like here, one, two, three, see how those three, and I know on this, I don't care, but I'm just pointing it out. You got three trees right here that are almost the same, same size, same shape, right? Yeah. Yeah. So those are the kind of things that I go, well, maybe this one becomes more of a shrub or scrub or something back here. I'm probably not, I'm going to really knock these out back here. Hang on. Oops. Now my thing's slowing down. Well, I totally smudge that out. I wouldn't smudge it out that much. Well, maybe I would. Hang on. Man, my computer's giving me a hard time lately. Hang on. There we go. So I wouldn't smudge them out that much. But back here, I'd probably knock them back. Hang on. I got to reset my stupid welcome thing. Where'd it go? There it is. Mike, can I ask yeah. you a question about Procreate really quick? Sure. So I tried to bring in your blending brushes into Procreate, yeah. but um, it's not doing the same thing as Photoshop. Do you know? I'd have um, to look at that actually, because I don't, you're talking about smudge brushes? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'd have to look at that. Let me look at that. Okay. All right, thank you. And also, yeah, because you shouldn't have to go in and actually adjust them because they're just set up the way they're set up. Exactly, yeah. Well, that's kind of weird. I'd have to look. So I wouldn't erase them that much. Or I wouldn't smudge them that much. But I'd probably back here. I kind of get these a little softer because they're going way into the background, right? Yeah. 
So, you know, I like this brush, by the way. And I'll pull some this way. And over here, this has nothing to do with this tool, but it's just a good thing to know. Like, I like the way you did this water here. Like, you picked up some nice colors and stuff. You might want to come in here. Let's get a regular brush for this. Uh, let's just try a mixer now. Let's try. I'm going to go to a light value. I'm going to go to a light. Hang on. There it is. I'm going to say it's a blue sky. And see where you got this reflection right here, which is really nice. Oops. Yeah? Yes. I might put a, a reflection right over that. See how it, it just goes boop and it sits behind the surface? Yeah. So whenever I can get like a little, um, this is pretty nice, man. Like if you come in here and you just kind of, like I say, just sort of manipulate it a little bit. Because that's what I would do. I just throw it down and then I start manipulating it. Oops, I don't want this. Okay, so this little button right here, these two buttons right here, that's what's giving me that empty um, nothing paint, right? Yeah. And then I just like to come in here and like really, you know, I might take a couple different brushes, soften things up a little. Like I said, pull things out. I'm going to go, hang on, my thing just came up here. We got a heavy flow. Let's do a bigger mix. There. And now I can get some nice little, I'll leave some of these just the way they are. I'll pull some out. This is nice back here. I like that. And then I just look like, okay, where does it need to change? Like, this is nice. I like that, that right there. And then here I might just go, okay, I don't want to see every individual stroke. So some of them I'll pull out. What's your major? Illustration. Oh, good. So does that make sense? Yeah, 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 it does. So it's nice to like throw down your brushwork. I mean, you do the same thing with traditional paint, you know? And then while it's still wet or something, you go in and, whoop, and you swipe an edge or you pull something out or you grab a bristle brush as opposed to a soft brush. That's what this is emulating, right? Okay. Yeah. Like when you go later in later stage into an oil painting, you usually go into the softer brushes because it lays down more paint puts down a softer edge, all that kind of stuff. And you kind of scrub everything in with a um, bristle brush. Sometimes I take a bristle brush with a uh, watercolor, which you're not supposed to use a watercolor, but um, you know, it gives me a whole different mark making thing. And, and I might push it this way as opposed to pulling it. I might push it up this way and I'll get real random sort of grass shapes. That's the same thing we're doing here, right? Yeah. If you ever looked at Ken Oster's brushes, his brushes were thrashed. I mean, they looked like they were unusable, but he got really great marks with them. You know what I mean? And they were yeah. just like, they were a mess, you know? And I always save all my old brushes. I got a jar of good brushes and I got a jar of all my old beat up crappy brushes because they make interesting marks. <laughs> I'm literally, I'm looking at all of my thrash brushes right now, actually. <laughs> good. Save them. Yeah. Yeah. Or even with, uh, I'm going to do a demo on this in my class. That's why it's in my head. Even with, uh, I, I'll take uh, powdered charcoal, or powdered graphite. I'll take a bristle brush and, and water, and I'll dip that in water and then hit the whole board with it. And it gets, it looks like a paint. It looks like paint. Then I do a drawing over it. And then I take a neat eraser and I start lifting all the lights out of it. And I get this super painterly effect with it, but it's all drawing, right? Yeah. Then I might seal that and start to float acrylics over to oil over it. And then, you know, I can build it up, right? And then I can end yeah. up leaving some of that stuff unfinished and then really focus on maybe the main part of the face, render it out a little bit or really nice brushwork and then let it drift off, right? That's the same thing as this. That's what we're trying to get to is all that painterly cool stuff. Yeah? Yeah. What kind of illustration you want to do? Um, that's honestly hard to say. I, like, yeah, I just, you know, I like to paint. <laughs> I do. I uh, started mostly with portraits, so that's kind of where I tend to stay. But I do want to move from that. Obviously, I want to do like, like I finally took um, what is it? Uh, 
the the drawing class what is it uh life drawing i finally took life drawing that was oh, great um so i was moving away from just like literally the head that was yeah. nice and then yeah i should probably do more like planner stuff <laughs> i'm gonna hope my, i've got a plein air class and curriculum right now as soon as it goes through i'm teaching it oh cool what i'm probably going to do in the meantime is i'll probably just do a workshop in between terms and we can just go out that'll be super i do, the reason we do that is so we can raise money for um for the free model night oh nice okay so they're usually really cheap like 45 bucks or something and it's like i don't know it might be four weeks five weeks um also all um and i'm gonna start i'm gonna do this a lot as soon as we are especially if people are vaccinated and stuff and i feel like when everybody's vaccinated then i'm gonna feel okay to go out and do stuff I'll probably, and I started doing this before we got on lockdown. Um, I started going, uh, I put it on my social media and stuff. And uh, I just said, I'm going to be at Murphy Ranch on Thursday at 2.30. If you want to come and paint and I'll help you out or whatever, come and paint. And I do that because I want to do it also where it's like, you don't have to RSVP. You don't have to tell me if you're going or not. I don't care. I'm going to go paint anyway. So I'm going to have a good time. If you want to show up, cool. You know what I mean? I like doing yeah. it where there's no obligation. Like you don't have to RSVP and all that stuff. And I also like doing it where if like nobody shows up, it's like, that's fine too. You know what I mean? Yeah. Last time we did it, probably we had about 10 people. It was fun. Yeah, that sounds cool. But I think plain air observational drawing are your two, I think, things you really got to get a handle on right now. Yeah. Okay. And life drawing. Okay. Yeah. You know, and then you're going to open up your uh, your options. Well, I like this one. Where's Kayla? Hello. Same comment here, yeah? Yeah. So now, like down here, I'm going to use the same brush because I liked it. Let's see. I'm going to go more on the flow. I'm going to pull the mix all the way up. Oops. Wait a minute. I want to go on, it's on sample all layers. Hang on. Because now what you want to do is be very, oops, be very aware of your edges. There it goes. So this grass down here is probably going to grow up around here, right? Mm -hmm. Now I'll use, I'd use a couple of different brushes for this. So I don't get too much of the same. And then some of these I'll just do as a directional thing. Oops. Just lost my brush. I think it was this one. Nope. This one. Let's try this one. Oops, I don't like that. Oh, that switch. It's not a mixer brush. Oh. This one. You know, I might start pulling these things where I'm showing the um the ground plane. Like this brush doesn't have a lot of power. Let's see flows all the way up. Let's go to wet for the hell of it and see what it does. Oh, that's pretty good. Okay, so the wet in this case is just going to make it smear more. You know, so I might, you know, I want to get some of this stuff in here, different mark making. I want to make I want to control like this one I might go back to here. Get a small smudge. A little bigger than that. And break up the oops, I gotta get on the actual layer. And break up this um break up this bark edge in a nice way. So I don't want everything soft. I might pull some of this out. You know, just stuff like that. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, break up some of these so they don't all look uniform. And then, you know, on this back here, sometimes I'll do this. Well, actually, I almost always do this. I'll catch my light brush. Let's go here. Go 
because I like to have some kind of in the sun. Oops. And I'll put a couple like that, you know, kind of like that. Does that make sense? Yes. And I'll just dance some over here and then I'll bury some of them again. That way I just, you know, I break it up. Yeah. That makes sense. Did you have any questions? Y'all good? Um, not really. I was just playing around with it. Okay, good. All right. Nobody has any questions. I'm going to move on. Okay. Get some soft edges in here. Like here, this is a very hard edge. Oh, that's cool. I like that one. That's nice. Okay. So let's look at this. So now we're going to use this in a different way. So I made this little ball, right? This is just a, a real stock way of showing this. Now I'm going to go in here. I got my, let's get a, I'm going to get a round. Now I want it, and I'll tell you why here in a second. I'm going to go to mixer brush. I hate it when it does that. Hang on. There. Okay. Now I'm going to make this big enough to grab this. So I'm going to go option, click. Okay. It's on sample all layers. Okay. So here's what's going to happen. Let's take sample all layers off. Okay. And then I'll explain to you later why. Okay, now see the ball right there in my little window? Yeah. Yes. Let's turn this off. Let's make another. Yeah, this is good. And now. So it's creating. It sampled it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Like I can do that, I can do that. It should pick up all the lighting. It kind of did. You can see the shadow values here. Um, oh, I don't have that much shadow on it. Um, but that's what it's going to do. It's going to kind of sample it, and then you can paint with it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Is that a 3D ball, or is that something you just painted? It's just something I painted real quick for this. Okay. Um, it's a bad sphere. Now, if I put texture on this thing, let's grab a texture brush. I don't know what this will do. I don't want that much texture. Hang on. Let's see what this does. It gets a little more furry texture, and I could go in and play with it. I, could, I should be able to go in here. And let's go spacing. See what I mean? Does that make sense? Yeah, no? Yeah. I don't know if I can, let's see. 
think it lost its thing when I changed the color. So let's go. Okay, so you get the point. It's just sampling it and then it, you're painting with it, right? Mm -hmm. So then I created this. I just create like a little lit bush. Same drill. I'm going to go option, click. And we're going to go back over here. And I can start to put together, hang on, I'm going to do it. See how it didn't catch it on that other side? It's got a hard edge. So I'm going to go, I want to switch my brush to, oops, to, this bush brush I made. You can see that shape. And now that sort of takes care of that problem. Does that make sense? Yes? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so let's put this here. Now I'm gonna go smaller. I wanna get it less uniform. And then I'm going to go over here, back to my other thing. And I'm just going to see if I can sample that lit side a little bit. I'm going to go a little bigger. Yeah, that's a little better. And then I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to sample. I'm going to go a little smaller with my brush. I'm going to go option and sample that. So now I just grab the dark part. So I can come in here and start making this a little less uniform. Does that make sense? <laughs> now, another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here. This is a really lit. Let me, I'm going to switch to. Um, Let's switch to my leaf brush that I made. It's sort of like what we were just talking here it is. And I'm gonna get, because I wanna, again, I wanna make this not too uniform. So let's grab this color. Let's go to a hotter version of it. And out here on this little lit part, I can break the edges. You know, and I can start to break this up so it doesn't feel so uniform. Does that make sense? Yeah. And you're just using a regular brush at this point, right? This is a brush that I made. So if you notice, it's kind of a nice brush, right? Yeah. And it sort of follows my hand. Now I could come in here and go, let's come in here and let's do the spacing thing again. Let's see what we can get. It doesn't look like it wants to give me a spacing. Let's go here. Let's just change it up. Now, if I wanted this brush to live, you know, I'd come in here and do the save brush preset, new brush preset. I'd save it. Okay. I don't need to do that right now, but so that's a little different, right? So it depends on how I'm, well, I'm also doing this with my mouse. So that's stupid. It depends on how hard I'm hitting it and all that kind of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And I do this back and forth where I just sort of grab values and start to make sense of it, hopefully. This can go smaller. So if I drag it, it's going to do that. So I could start off. I could even go back here. Let's move this. I could come back here and just to change it up, oops. I like to get a couple of leaves coming off the edge here. Here maybe, um, you know, and get it uniform. I'm gonna come back here and I'm gonna go maybe to this value and a little less. And I could right away just come in here with this, create another thing back here just dense it up here and there 
Let me go, a and now I'm gonna just go a little lighter because this is fuller or further back. So I want to try and push that idea a little bit. You know, and I can make another leaf brush if I wanted to. And maybe I take this. Let's do this. Let's go. I'm gonna take some kind of, I can adjust this, so it's not gonna matter. Let's try that. And I'm gonna go. And then we'll make it sunset. Maybe a little down. Oops. I'm going to pull that down a hair. Actually, I'm going to leave it there for now. And then I can come back here, maybe behind all this. I'm just going to grab a blue, maybe a really gray blue. I can adjust this too, so it's not going to matter. And then I'm going to take, I'll just take a regular brush for this. Let's see what this looks like. Put a little bit of mountain or something back there. Well, that's kind of cool. But I'm going to take it now, and I'm going to I'm going to knock the opacity back a little bit. Or let's try this. Hang on. I'm going to desaturate that a little maybe lighten it up a little. Then I'm going to come down here, maybe with my smudge or with my mixer brush. Let's try that. I'm going to empty it out. I'm going to come down here because I don't want that hard edge there. Let's go. Let's try it. Yeah, there we go. So I'm going to knock the wetness down a little bit. I don't really like this brush. I'm going to try a different one. A little better. I'm also going to go into this back thing because that dark is just sticking out too much to me. Maybe play around up there a little. subtle and then this is probably going to go I'm going to get on this layer go back to my mixer brush let's try this one again let's go a little darker mixer brush. I'm going to change this because I don't want it to just not have color. I want to go a little darker. It's too wet. See, something's off here. Hang on. Brush this one. There we go. Had too much. Uh, it was mixing too much. Okay. So then I could come in here and I could start to, you know, maybe I'll sample that color. Oops. There it goes.
And I could go to a lighter value here, more orangey, pick up some of that sunlight a little bit. And then let's go. I'm going to, eh, it's fine. I'll just leave it like that. I could come in here and maybe pick some of this sky color with a brush. I'm going to put my brush on the overlay, not the layer overlay, on the, on the brush overlay. And let's try color dodge, which means it's going to add color and lighten it. And let's pick some of that. You got to be really careful with this because it'll go really screaming on you. And see how it starts to pop the leaves a little bit because it's just burning them. Does that make sense? Yeah. With a little bit of color. You know, and then I could take these probably and go knock these up. Uh, a little lighter in value. I could go a little grayer in value. And start to push them back. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I'd have to get this in a shape that I like. And then I still have to come into it and play with it. Um, another thing people do sometimes, this kind of thing is we haven't talked about this. There's a filter gallery in here. Okay, so we have blur. We know our blur thing here, yeah? Mm -hmm. But there's a blur gallery here. I'm gonna go to iris blur. So I can dial in sort of an in and out focus kind of thing. These here, pull it out. And then this here is how much in the blurred zone it's gonna be blurred. So that's too much, I just want a little. And then I'm going to pull it more. I'm going to pull it more extreme here. And then give it a little more. And I could focus it in like a camera. And then I just hit OK here. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So, you know, really simple way to create an environment. You could go in. Um, you want to create your, um, your whatever your foliage brush or whatever it is. Um, we're just doing it with foliage because it's just a kind of a standard way of doing it to learn it. Okay. So it samples sort of like your um, stamp brush does um, the clone tool, but it's, it's totally different because the clone tool is picking from something all the time. This is a standalone tool that you can now paint with. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And it's the same issue. Once I went in here and I got all this done, then I might come back in here again Go back to my mixer brush. I don't like that one. Let's try this one again. I kind of like this one. And you know, why did that not change? No, that's not it. Hang on. Maybe it's this one. Nope. I got to rename all these so I know what the hell they are. Let's just try this. That one doesn't want to be a mixer brush. I'm going to hit this little button again, clear it out. And I could come in here and start manipulating a few edges just to make sure it doesn't feel uniform. This one doesn't feel too uniform. You know, and I get a nice edge. I don't like this edge, it's a little too blurry. And I do that on an over on another layer going, oh, here's the other thing I wanted to tell you guys. Be careful of this, because this is something that got me and it was really frustrating. So let's go back over here and let's sample this again, yeah? Mm -hmm. So let's go to our hard round. Let's go. And now let's say you forget or didn't know. See this sample all layers thing again? Yeah. Now this is this really frustrated me when I first did this because I had no idea. And now when I go over here, Oh, it didn't sample it, hang on. All 
Oh. Now when I come over here, see what it's doing? Why? Because I added on sample all layers and it picked up the layers underneath. This is one of the reasons when I first started this tool, I go, this is stupid. You know what I mean? But it was me. It wasn't the tool, obviously, right? So make sure when you're sampling things that you don't have sample all layers on or it's going to pick up everything around it. And you want to just pick up, you know, so I can have this on. I can have the background layers and stuff on. And this has to be on its own layer, by the way. Um, as long as this is off, it's just going to sample the one layer. Now you can see it. It's floating on a transparent thing. Yeah? Jessica Mendoza? Mm -hmm. Okay, questions? All you're doing is option click. Option, yeah. I'm, I'm making sure that I'm in. Okay, so there's two things I'm doing. This initial one, I'm just taking a big round brush that will encompass the whole thing. And then I can come in here and boom, right? Then, but I can also, if I, that one's a little better. Um, I can also go assign this, oops, sorry, to another brush. In this case, I'm gonna assign it to this bush brush I made. And it'll sort of sample it and it'll, or I could come in here with this bush brush and I can go smaller and now sample that little dark area. So I can come back in here and just add that in if I want to just paint in a dark area or vice versa. And go out here and grab that, come back here. And this one for some reason is really. I changed the setting so it's not quite as oh, there it goes. You know, and then I can get this lighter side. Does that make sense? Yeah, I'm trying it out right now and it's not letting me sample it for some reason. You probably don't have it. You probably have it right here. You want load brush, not load solid colors only. Okay. Let me try. try that. Where'd you go? Yeah, I tried it. It's not, it's not letting me. Okay, so it's, you've got something. You're on mixer brush, right? Yeah, I am. Okay, so you're on mixer brush. Do you have a hard, just get a basic hard round, right? This one. Okay. And that that's, comes native to your software. Yeah. And then you want to go. Okay, here's my thing. I want to go encompass the whole thing. Option, click, and that should pick it up. You don't want to have it on solid colors only because then it'll just load a solid color. Yeah. When I click option, for some reason, I'm getting that little um, the eyedropper tool. I don't know why I'm getting that. It, the only two things I can think of that it could be is one of these here. They're both supposed to be on, right? Well, it's sort of like these two, see, it just cleared it. Um, those two sort of tell it, um, see right now it's not picking up, see that? Yeah. So now I'm gonna click this right here and now it is, see that? It's weird. Is that pick it? Because that should pick it up now. It's not. I keep getting that that eyedrop tool for some reason. And you're in the mixer brush. You shouldn't be getting an eyedropper tool. Yeah. Are you hitting, wait? Are you hitting option click or are you hitting like I or E? No, I'm hitting option and then I'm clicking it. The only thing I can say is it's one of these two or it's uh, you have it on load solid colors only. Yeah. Or maybe let's see if maybe this one will do it. Okay, that one's fine. Let's see if we go to this one. That's still fine. So either one of those should be okay. 
and I don't have, oh, another thing, usually people say to use dry, heavy load on this. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Those okay, are just pre- So I, I exit out and I did it again and then now it's doing it. Okay. <laughs> so, thank you. It's a weird tool, but you'll get used to it. Yeah? Yeah. You gotta, you gotta master that tool. I think it's important, okay? Even if you end up going, you know, it depends on what you're doing, I guess, but all these things, like I'm looking at it as like a painting tool, but, and I'll go online and I'll see if I can find a video or two on people are just using it for like um, uh, uh, color or what do you call it? Uh, photo, um, photo stuff. Okay, hang on. I had a note in here to myself. I want to make sure I get it. Let me have all these. All right, questions? And by the way, this brush that I was using, this one, this one, this brush that I'm using there was one that I created. I think I just did this. I just took my leaf brush, I think. You can use anything for this, actually. That's too fat. Oops. I spread these out now, so it's going to be weird. Uh, I just created kind of that kind of thing. I did it in black and white, I think. And then I just did my... Um, I also erased some of this center out, but I just did something like that. And then I just did the thing where I, thing we learned a long time ago, edit, define brush preset. And then I just had this flat brush. Oops. So let's get rid of this, hang on. Then I ended up with this brush, bush right here. And I could just basically do that. Then I think I just came in with my leaf brush, a little lighter value. I know my colors are all crappy right now. And just sort of created this simple brush. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And then that's what I sampled off of. You know that and then that's what i sampled off of okay cool simple when you go look at like concept paintings now when you look at them i'm hoping you're seeing and you're going holy crap this whole thing was done with like mixer brush uh and custom brushes yeah <laughs> i mean a lot of them those ones that i've been showing you that look like oil those are mixer brush okay so if you're interested in that that's one of the ways to get to that okay Variety, and and I hope you're also seeing as we move along now, like doing that little simple landscape, you're starting to mix up techniques, right? So the mixer brush is going to get you so far, and, and but the mixer brush can do this, and I would use this. I would go in and go, well, I'm going to throw out a bunch of um, trees and things in there, but I got to make sure that they're not all uniform, that it doesn't look like I'm using that brush, which is what we talked about earlier, where I'm going in and I'm I'm really manipulating edges and everything and making sure that it doesn't look uniform. It doesn't look like I'm using a, um, uh, you know, a custom brush, a scatter brush or whatever. Ideally what you want it to do and then going in and sort of treating it like an oil painting with the mixer brush and softening edges and, and painting into it, painting wet into wet into it. I might take a color, like if there's a, a warm light back there in the forest, I'm probably going to put the mix really low or, you know, not too much. And I'm going to mix, I'm going to let those two paints intermingle a little bit. And it'll get a nice, just like if I was uh, paint with real oil paint. Does that make sense? Okay. Questions? Irene? No. How come you just undid your um, microphone? Because I was saying yes to your oh. question. Okay, well, that's good then. Nobody has any questions? Everybody gets it? 
Yeah. Okay, guys. Um, hang on. I got to get another screen grab. Hang on. Okay, so what I want is obviously just a simple landscape like that. Okay. Whatever your take on it is. I don't care. Hang on. Okay, does everybody know what they're doing? What I want? Yes. Basically, what I just did, simple. And then we'll go back over them. And then I want to talk about another kind of photo thing, but it also kind of speaks to painting on Wednesday. Yeah? Because I don't, uh, this class has a variety of um, disciplines in it. So I don't want to just go like, hey, give me a full on oil painting. You know, that's, that, that's silly. Um, and also it's not a painting class, but I want to make sure that you're understanding these things and you can put them into play if you go into digital painting or even if you've already taken digital painting. Okay. Sounds good. And I'll put it up uh, under assignments. I'm going to try and get the video done right now. As soon as it's got to render and then I'll edit it. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Okay, you guys. I'll see you on Wednesday. Bye, Bye Mike.